Hello and good afternoon. My name is Duncan Bloy. I'm a professor at the Cardiff School of Journalism, Media and Cultural Studies. And this afternoon I am talking with Abhinigarh Garg, who is the Charles Wallace Fellowship uh, student that we have had with us for the past three months, researching the topic of freedom of information. Uh, Abhinav is from the Times of India. Welcome. And perhaps just to start, you could tell us why you decided to come to Cardiff and a little bit about your background with the Times of India. Yeah, sure. Uh, I happen to be a journalist in Times of India, uh, and I was covering the legal beat, um, the Delhi High Court to be specific. And uh, it was a huge coincidence that uh, my entry into this profession happened uh, along with the introduction of the Right to Information um, Act in India. And uh, very soon I realized that it was, uh, you know, a silent revolution happening, so to say, because uh, a lot of litigants in court were using more and more the Right to Information Act to get uh, information about their cases, to get information about uh, court workings, which mm -hmm. was absolutely impossible right. to think uh, prior to 2005. And, um, that is when, I mean, uh, even recently you can see the repercussions of the Right to Information Act in India has happened with the latest episode involving um, the disclosure of assets controversy of the Supreme Court judges. I would imagine that's quite a controversial topic. That's a huge controversy <laughs> and, um, I mean, uh, there were people involved in it who, who gave, their, gave it their best shot. Hmm. But I don't suppose um, we could have achieved the results that we eventually did had... Uh, the structural base of right to information not being there. Okay. And uh, the purpose of you being here is to compare how we in this country work with freedom of information. Yes. Uh, the the very thing, the most important thing that struck me was uh, that not just, you know, uh, we share the same kind of parliamentary mm -hmm. democratic system of governance, but also the fact that the right to information, as you call the freedom of information here, uh, happened in the same year, 2005. Indeed. Yeah. Yep. So uh, this led me to research more and find out how the the act has been panning out in the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. And I was, um, I must say, I was quite surprised to see the similarities in the in the experiences of India and the United Kingdom. You, you've found it easier to get access to information in this country, or were there obstacles put in your way? Uh, I wouldn't say obstacles. Uh, yes, I was not uh, as tenacious in pursuing uh, the officials here as I am usually in uh, India. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, the reluctance was there. Mm. The reluctance could not uh, be missed. And as in India, it was the, the civil society, the journalists, researchers, uh, who sort of came forward and gave me all the information, the perspective, the inputs. Okay. Uh, but yes, the, the, the officialdom was not very uh, forthcoming. No, I mean, there, there is a view that's put forward frequently in this country that the freedom of information legislation was not designed to give copy to journalists. It was really designed for ordinary citizens just to get access to information which they would normally find difficult to have access to. Y yes, I have I've come across that view and I, I disagree with it because first, uh, I think uh, it should be a 10-year period after which you can sort of start commenting or uh, being critical about an act sure. which has come into play. And secondly, uh, the journalist is not uh, using the information for his or her personal gain. Uh, in fact, it gets published or it gets it comes on TV, mm -hmm. on television, and it only gets amplified. So it's a very particular public work that is being uh, uh, you know done by the journalist through uh, resorting to the Freedom of Information Act. So in a way, I think it's a huge advantage if journalists are using it. Sure. And all the information that you've gathered now, what what happens to it? Uh, well, I I plan to write a thesis on it, uh, in which, uh, uh, depending on what um, information I have got mm. here, and I'll compare it with uh, my experiences as a journalist in India and the ringside view, so to say, I got about uh, the right to information and its implementation. Mm. So I'll be writing uh, my report on which, uh, which will also contain some of the uh, reference to challenges which lie ahead and maybe um, draft a set of best practices for uh, practitioners of uh, right to information, how to write a crisp sure. um, FYP. This is for both countries or just for India? 
I think it should be for both countries because uh, uh, that is a problem being faced in both the countries that the application that is being filed is most of more often than not is not very lucid or clear. Mm -hmm. And finally, you've had three months in South Wales in Cardiff and within the journalism school. Uh, your experience? Oh, it was absolutely fabulous. Uh, I the three months that I spent here were, happened to be one of the most humid and sweaty months <laughs> back in Delhi. So obviously, it was a welcome break for me. Plus, um, Wales is one of the most beautiful parts of the United Kingdom. I had just heard about it, but staying in Cardiff and exploring the nearby areas uh, gave me a huge opportunity to, you know, enjoy the beauty of the place. I gather you managed to escape from Wales and went to Scotland for a week. Yes, I, I attended a conference there, and uh, even the Scottish experience was lovely. Good. Well, we'll be sorry to lose you, but thank you very much for sharing your experiences with us. And we look forward to receiving uh, Abby's thesis, and hopefully that will lead to a few publications as well. I hope thank so. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much.